All right, thank you, Chairman Duffy and members of the subcommittee and the committee. Uh, I want to start by saying we, we at the National Alliance to End Homelessness, and I personally have worked with this committee for many, many years on this very difficult issue, and I thank you all for your devotion to dealing with it and to finding things that are really going to work. Um, I'd especially like to address Congressman Stivers. Um, we literally 15 years ago identified Columbus, Ohio as one of the places that leads the country in a new approach to homelessness that could actually start getting results, really based on going beyond just funding a bunch of individual programs and empowering a community-wide system that would look at data, look at what really works, make decisions about how to allocate scarce resources, and get results, and Columbus has continued to do that. We work very closely with people at the Community Shelter Board um, who oversee this process in Columbus. Uh, they, I know, regard you as an ally in this work, and even though we disagree on this particular bill, we can work through that, but we also regard you as an ally in this, and I thank you for your work on this. Um, this is a crucial time on the issue of homelessness, as all of you may be aware. As the Hearth Act has become uh, fully implemented and has, and the kind of good practices, both that are, that are incentivized by the Hearth Act and that are incentivized by, say, the homeless programs in the, in the veterans world, Communities are finding that they are getting better and better results. The kind of results that Columbus was getting 15 years ago are now more common in communities in terms of people who are on the streets quickly being housed. At the same time, because of where we are in the short-term business cycles and longer-term issues of housing, the problem of affordable housing in the country is getting far, far worse. So that one effect of that is that people are pouring into the homelessness system. So that even though, even as communities of care do better, they're dealing with more and more people in their community who are falling into that system. This is a time we need to be doing our very best work. And we need support from everybody in Congress to do that. Um, this particular bill, the, the concerns we at the Alliance ha have about this bill are mainly around eligibility rules for the continuum of care. The continuum of care is the primary homeless program at HUD. It, it accounts for 4% of HUD spending, so it's a small program. Um, it has, however, a very important role to play. As, it's, as it was overhauled by the Hearth Act in a bipartisan manner, um, it has become what's driving communities through the competitive grant process driving communities to get better results and to focus on the people who have the most severe and immediate problems. Much of what the Hearth Act did was to make changes in, in who is eligible for the program, the definition of homelessness, but particularly as it relates to uh, who's eligible. People who are in housing, who are sleeping in an apartment or house, but who are in immediate danger because the house they're sleeping is in is a drug den, because they're victims of domestic violence, because they are dealing with all kinds of truly dangerous situations. Those are all eligible for the continuum of care right now. You don't need to change anything to make them eligible. You need to change the funding levels in order to have enough money to actually address the whole problem. Um, but the eligibility rules don't need to change. The, the problem with this bill's a large expansion of the definition is that it will at best overwhelm systems that communities have for determining how to uh, allocate the scarce resources of the homeless programs. And at worst, it'll mean that the worst off people, the people in the gravest immediate danger will have a harder time getting help because they will be uh, sort of out-competed for the resources by people who have a little more stable situation living with relatives or friends or family. Um, the, the work that HUD has done on this has been very responsive to what Congress has told HUD to do. And the, the, the 
report language from this committee, from the Appropriations Committee over many years has been very clear that HUD needs to find out what kind of interventions are doing the best work, are getting the best results, and then make sure communities are using the money for those. This bill moves in exactly the opposite direction, and that's the other concern besides the eligibility rules. So I'm, I'm happy to answer questions about this, I have, I, or to come and see you in your office if you have other questions, but thank you.